Our first reading is from Joshua 24, verses 1 to 2a and 14 through 18. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve 
the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the Lord answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites, who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The psalm for today is Psalm 34, verses 15 through 22. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants and none will be tr punished who trust in him. The second lesson for today is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, Keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said, To those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I because of the Father, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard this, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it was granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. First, let me say what a joy it is to be here with you again. It's been a while, uh, and it's always wonderful to come uh, and be with folks here at Hope in the Desert. I want to call to your mind... Uh, written by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. Mind. Okay, so Frodo says to Gandalf, I did not.
The wonderful thing is, Hello, hello? Yes. Okay, the wonderful thing is that the kingdom of God does not rest upon technology. <laughs> so, setting the scene again. So Frodo and Gandalf are sitting together, and Frodo turns to Gandalf and said, I wish that I didn't live to see such times. And Gandalf turns back to Frodo and says, so do all who live through such times, but that is not for them to decide. What is left for them to decide is what to do with the time that is given them, the choice they make. Likewise, in Harry Potter, and I don't remember what movie, and if you do, raise your hand as I tell the scene, is that Harry Potter is, is concerned that he is turning into someone bad. And he goes to Dumbledore and he, said, he says, you know, what if I'm turning to, into someone bad? What if this is all happening to me? And, and Dumbledore said, it's not who you are that matters. It's the choices you make. It's the choices you make. And as I read through this morning's uh, lesson from uh, the Old Testament, those scenes came to me. That it's all about our choices. Because we know who we are, right? We're all children of God. We're all created in the image of God. Scripture tells us that. The book of Genesis tells us that we are all created in the image of God and that God breathes life into us. So that's who we are. But it's the choices we make that matter. And we're faced with innumerable choices every single day. Innumerable choices, some very trivial. What am I gonna have for breakfast? You know, what television shows I, well, that may not be so trivial, but, um, you know, and, and then there are much more important questions. You know, how am I going to face this ethical situation at work? How am I going to respond to my spouse when we're having a disagreement? How am I going to teach my child to follow in the paths, in the footsteps of Christ? Those are really, really important questions, and we make them every day. Just as the people of Israel made the choice in today's reading from the Old Testament. It's a magnificent setting. Here they are, they've entered into the Promised Land. Joshua is holding a, a large gathering of all the peoples, all the tribes, and he's setting this choice before them. He said, this day you have to choose. Are you going to choose the old gods, the gods of Egypt and the gods of the Ammonites among whom you live? Or are you going to serve the one true God? And then Joshua says, I can tell you, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And everyone else says the same, far be it from us. They said, we will serve the Lord also. Now, we know from the history of Israel that there are many times when that steadfastness falters, when they make choices that are not quite so great, right? And we know that even David himself, King David, chosen and anointed by God, makes a really bad choice when he takes Bathsheba and sends Uriah the Hittite to the front of the war to be killed so that he can have Bathsheba as his wife. So the, the scriptures are replete with times when people make good choices and when people make bad choices. And that's just human nature. But the important thing is time and time again, what do the people of God do when they make bad choices? They repent. Yes, they repent. And that word comes from the Latin, which literally means to think again. Repent, to think again. And, and it's, it's in a way a translation of a Greek word called metanoia. Metanoia, which literally means to turn around. Yeah? So if you're walking in one direction and it's the wrong direction, at some point, if you're in a good relationship with God, if God is in your life, there comes a point where you think, hmm, that's not the right direction to go, and literally 
you turn around, you repent, you experience metanoia. Your choices are important each and every day. In our gospel lesson today, the disciples certainly experienced that as well. We've been hearing the gospel lesson about sort of the, the continuing gospel lesson about Jesus talking about himself as the bread of life. I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. If you eat of this bread, you shall not die, you shall live forever. And, and when Jesus talks in this way, you have to remember who his audience are. The people who are hearing him are observant Jews who are observing strict dietary laws. There are a whole raft of things that they are not allowed to eat, one of which is blood. In order for meat to be kosher, it has to be drained of all its blood. And so kosher butchers, you go and you see when they uh, slaughter animals, they hang them until all the blood is drained out of them. Then and only then can a, a household who keeps kosher eat that meat. And so when Jesus says, unless you drink my blood, you can imagine. His disciples say, this is a hard saying. Yes, it is, because it goes against the very laws that if we look back to our Old Testament lesson today, that all the people of Israel said they would observe. And Jesus is asking them what they hear, is Jesus asking them to turn their backs on the worship of the one true God. And so they say, this is a difficult saying. How can we bear this? And many of them, the gospel records, left Jesus' company. They decided to walk another way. They made a different choice. And Jesus then turns to the 12. And he says, well, what about you? What are you going to do? Are you going to leave as well? And, and we can imagine that moment, if this were a cinematic marvel on the big screen, we can imagine that there is dramatic music playing in the background. There is this long pregnant pause as the camera zooms in on Peter's face and Peter makes a choice. And he says, no, Lord, of course we're not going to leave you. You have the words of eternal life. And they all make the choice to continue to follow Jesus. Now we know the rest of the story. And we know that choice leads through very, very difficult times for each and every one of them. And so those choices then come at a cost. And so when the, psalm, the psalmist today speaks about, see if I can find it really quickly, um, or is it, no, sorry. I think it's in the, it, it's actually in the epistle. Strengthen the weak knees. You know, there are those times when, when I face difficult decisions and, and you want to be able to stand firm, you know, as, as the writer to the letter of the Ephesians says, put on the whole armor of God and stand firm. There are some times when I have to make those decisions that I don't feel very firm. A and my knees feel weak and watery. And it's at those times that we have to remember that our choices are what make us. We're children of God, made in the image of God, but our choices are important. And we must remember this story from the Gospels. When we find those times that we don't feel quite so firm and our knees begin to buckle, metaphorically, spiritually speaking, remember those who left Jesus. Whatever happened to them? Maybe they came back. Maybe they experienced repentance. Maybe they experienced metanoia. The Gospels are silent on that. But we have the example of the twelve who were firm. Even Peter, who denied Jesus three times, 
repentance and metanoia and made the choice to stay in the fellowship of Christ. As I said at the beginning, all of us face choices each and every day. And we face choices not unlike the people of Israel in our first scripture reading. And the choice comes to us each and every day, which gods are you going to serve? Which gods are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the gods of this world? Are you going to serve the gods of money? Power? Instant gratification? Addictions? Are you going to serve the gods that the culture and the world hand out to us as normative? Or are you going to serve the one true God? These are the questions that come at us every day. These are the choices that we have to make. And sometimes we become weary at having to make those choices all the time. One of the things that I've noted to many, many people, and I've had conversations, as I'm sure you have, with your friends and your family members, as I have, and with colleagues, is the weariness that has come with this pandemic. Nothing is easy anymore. We can't just decide at the spur of the moment to go do something, to go on a trip, or you know, drive down the road to another town, or, or get together with you know, large groups of friends. We can't, and this weariness sets in. Physical weariness, spiritual weariness, emotional weariness. And in the midst of all that, what's important is the choices we make. The choices to take care of ourselves. The choices to be kind and patient to those around us. The choices to keep ourselves and others safe by wearing masks, such as we're all doing here this morning. The choices that is to say, in a very few words, the choices to be Christ-like in the midst of this very difficult time. The psalmist includes a line which speaks, I think, very clearly to at least where I feel myself to be today. And, and I don't say this, I don't point this out, uh, you know, to be whining or, you know, poor pitiful me. It's just a truth, I think. It's a reality, and the psalmist points it out to us. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Many are the troubles we face today. We could be here all day listing them. Just as we could be here all day listing the joys and the blessings that we experience each day. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. And the deliverance comes with a cost. And the cost is our choice to stay in relationship to God, to walk steadfastly with Jesus each and every day. If we do that, if we make that choice, God is ever present, ever present. And no matter what troubles we face, God will be right there with us to deliver us out of them all.
Let us, uh, let us affirm our faith. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory. the life of the world to come. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For our church leaders, Archbishop Justin Welby, the presiding Bishop Michael Curry, our diocesan Bishop Michael Hun, and our rector, Father Dan, and his family, we pray for the Southwest Deanery. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. There's more. <laughs> Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Let your loving guidance be upon them. God, hear the prayers of your people. We trust that as we lift our prayers to you, that they would enter into your heart and that they would answer according to you. Let me pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God.
peace of the Lord be always with you. Christ breaks bread and bread. 
God's wisdom faithfully to use these gifts in the work you have given us to do here in this outpost of your kingdom, hope in the desert church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Oh. Trespasses, 
as we would give up those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 